let's stand to our feet tonight as we give God some praise in this place. Yeah. Come on. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow. Come on, church. And I stand face to face with the enemy. I will know that I am not forsaken. Yeah. You surround me when the fire is at my feet. You're my defender. You fight for me every day. I will remember. You're all I need. You are my healer.
Oh, we're going to give Jesus everything tonight. We lay it all down at your feet. Oh, because we have taken it all. Come on, church. I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my shame. Oh, my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Yeah. I'm trading my sickness. Oh, my sickness. I'm trading my pain. Oh, my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy of song tonight, and I think you're going to really enjoy it. I want you to sing it with us. Worship the Lord tonight. In Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand, and everything around me is shaken. I'll never be
Come and go, church. Man, what a what a true, wonderful song. <laughs> Glory.
Man, I'm so glad that I can put all of my weight upon him and never be let down. Build my whole life on him and never be let down. What a God we serve. What an incredible God we serve. Faithful to the end. And so magnificent that there is no obstacle that's too complicated for him. There's no problem that he can't solve. I mean, he, he spoke the world into existence. He has said, let there be. And there was light. And then we're sitting here with our problems that seem very big to us, but with a God to whom those problems are very small. And we come before him tonight in complete faith and complete hope that, God, you are the only hope of my salvation, my life. I'm not leaning on myself. I'm trusting in you. We want to pray. We want to pray for this service tonight that God would move powerfully by the Holy Spirit that God would touch us, that God would revive our hearts, that God would bring healing to people who are hurting, that God would bring deliverance. We want to pray. i ask some of the brothers to come around, Brother Rich Richardson, and he's got some procedures tomorrow, so we want to pray for him. We want to pray for Manny Menchaca as well, for healing in his body and many other needs that we have uh, as well. I'm going to ask Brother Emmanuel, would you come uh, and, uh, and open our service in prayer, Brother Emmanuel? And he's going to make his way up here. And then we all have needs that we want to lift before God, things that are on our hearts. Let's take this time to pray for these things. Let's pray for this service tonight that God would have his way. Father, we thank you for your goodness, your mercies that are new and fresh every morning. God, we are leaning not on our own understanding, but we are trusting you completely. I'm asking you tonight for the power of the Holy Ghost to, to minister. Our Heavenly Father, God, we just come before you this evening in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, God, we're so grateful, oh God, that we can put our hope, we can put our trust in you, Lord Jesus. For you alone, oh God, are faithful. You alone, oh God, are worthy of our praise. And Lord, we thank you, God, that you never fail us, oh God. You never let us go, oh God. You never let us down, Father God. Right now, we have needs, oh God. We bring before your throne of grace, oh God. God, we ask, God, that you move, oh God, in the area of healing. God, we pray that you move, oh God, in the area of deliverance, oh God. God, many of us, oh God, have financial difficulties and burdens. God, we pray, God, that you come, oh God, you answer every single prayer, oh God, that's lifted in this place tonight, oh God. We worship you, oh God. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We thank you, oh God, for what you're going to do tonight. God, for your healing word, oh God, for your ministering, oh God, oh Lord, in this service. We thank you. We worship you. We give you all the glory and praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you as you find your seat this evening. And then we're very glad for all of you that are here tonight. We're very blessed to have uh, evangelist Larry Beauregard is going to be ministering in a couple of minutes. Amen. It's always a powerful time when he comes. Amen. There's, you know, you could talk about OGs and then you'd have to talk about the OG. And the OG is going to be ministering this evening. And uh, the powerful thing about that, most of us, we could, we could remember when people walked into church. But the, I think the only ones that could remember when, when Pastor Larry walked into church is probably Pastor Warner and Mona. That would be it <laughs> out of all of us. And so uh, he's been ministering for many years, is going to bless us, having great breakthrough uh, in various places and in India and just really making impact, uh, not only uh, in India, but here as well. I've been hearing just tremendous things from young men who are taking advantage. We have so much ministry in this church, and to, to be able to uh, come alongside these men who have gone and done such wonderful things for God and just try to learn some things. And so a number of young men have been telling me how blessed they've been by uh, just, uh, you know, Brother Larry making himself available to them and, and uh, just an, an impartation that's taking place. We're going to get some of that tonight as well. And so we're looking forward to that uh, in a couple of minutes. Before we get to that, just a couple of announcements um, that we want to make. Um, Tuesday's 4th of July. And so um, it's a holiday. And so um, the, the church will be closed that day. Can somebody tell Josh not to come to church, please, on Tuesday? Josh needs to take a day off at some point in his life. And so Cafe Globe will be closed. The church will be closed. Josh will not be. Well, Josh will probably still find his way to be here. But 
I'm forbidding him to come. And so we enjoy that holiday. I want you to just have a good time. Uh, and uh, it's going to be a wonderful celebration of our nation. And so we're uh, going to have a good time. And then this Wednesday night is a very special um, service because we have Pastor Israel Habtamu, who uh, him and his wife Deborah, we just announced going into Ethiopia. So they weren't able to be here for the conference, but he's going to come in on Wednesday. He's going to minister Wednesday night, him and his wife, Deborah. We're going to get an opportunity to meet them. He's going to preach Wednesday night. Uh, and then uh, Thursday, we're going to re record a podcast with him and his story and their testimony. Uh, it's going to be a great time. Uh, you don't want to miss Wednesday night. So that's going to be 7 o'clock. You'll be able to hear from the missionary himself before he goes into Ethiopia and all that God is going to do there. We're looking forward. Uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it because this is something Pastor Warner has been praying for for the last 20 years, which means there's 20 years of prayers that have gone and been sown into this nation, uh, not just by our pastor, but by many pastors around the world. And so we're looking forward to what God is going to do. And then just looking ahead uh, to Friday, there is a youth rally uh, with Pastor Dan Steffen from Auckland, New Zealand. This is the place I just went to preach uh, in a couple months ago, uh, having amazing revival there. I, I believe on the last night we had over 350 people that were in that service. A lot of them are young people. He's got a bunch of marriages and kids. And so he's going to minister very powerfully to our youth. You want to make sure if you have teenagers in middle school, high school, if you are in the college age, if you just want to act like it and sneak in for some good ministry, Friday night is where you want to be, and so I won't tell anyone. But 7.30 in the Fellowship Hall, Vision Unlimited, we also have our Spanish language service on Thursday night at 7.30 as well. And then the memorial service for Pastor Andrew Zamora is going to be in Silver City on Friday at 1 o'clock if you are uh, planning on attending that, and so just want to make you aware of that. Amen. I don't know about you, but it's hot. It's been hot this last week, huh? It's getting hotter. I'll, I'll tell you who my real hero is, Dean Ingram. <laughs> that brother was out there this morning on a golf cart taking people to their cars in the 105, 8 degree heat. And so we have a lot of heroes in our <laughs> church. It's been hot, but God's been good last night. It was hot at our concert, but in different ways, Brother Anthony is going to come and give us a report on that. Praise God. Last night we had a, an absolute blast, quite literally. Uh, Purge uh, came out and played, and it was fireworks, literally just, just fireworks. Um, so we had an outreach, and like Pastor Garrett was saying, it was, man, in the morning it was hot. But we had a number of people show up for the outreach, brave the heat, and just be, just begin to minister to people. We passed out a ton of flyers. We spoke to a ton of people. And then we came back and had hamburgers, hot dogs, and like I said, Purge did a great job. Uh, Pierce did an a absolutely fantastic rendition of the Star Spangled Banner. It was fire because he almost got caught on fire. So <laughs> there was that. But um, the, the main highlights, and this is kind of like a, a, this is just an awesome, awesome testimony. Uh, uh, we had two people that came and got saved. But the, the biggest thing is my, my first uh, interaction with this complex right here, right, right next to us, is when I became the door director and I got called by Pastor Pinnock and I had to go back and pick up a whole bunch of flyers at 1130. And so it was kind of a, like, man, that's, that's, that's kind of crazy. But the time that I've been saved, I've never actually heard of Someone, and it may have happened, I don't know, but this Saturday, someone heard the music. Someone was just out there, they listened to the music, and they came over to see what was happening, and they prayed to get saved. They gave their life to Jesus to get saved. And it, it was just a fantastic thing. And then also, Brother Chris Kroon, uh, he invited one of his co-workers to come out, and that brother came out. He's from Trinidad, Tobago, and he, just, he was just blown away by what was happening and he gave his life to Jesus. And this was, the reason why it's just such a powerful thing, man, is because we've been contending for that in the concert scenes. We've been contending for visitors, for people just to come in off the street. And, and it was an answered prayer. 
that night. So uh, I want to thank everybody that helped out cooking hot dogs, that made it happen. Um, praise God. We thank you. Keep praying for the concert scene. Amen. Let's have the ushers come this evening. We're going to worship the Lord with our giving, our tithes and offerings. I tell you what was so powerful about last night is Purge was fire. Man, that's one of the best bands our church has ever had. And to see some of these brothers get back together and uh, after many, many years, it's incredible testimonies. Some of these brothers had left the Lord for over a decade and then just God has grabbed hold of their heart, saved them, and just set them free from the bondage of sin that they found themselves in. And now they're ministering uh, and just uh, with some anointing. And uh, man, I tell you, if you, if you hadn't heard Purge, you got to hear Purge. I, I've got to say, they're really good. But I, I was remembering last night. Sometimes you forget, you know, and then you hear it again. You're like, it's like a song you haven't heard for 15 years and you hear it and you're like, that's a really good song. Yeah, it was really good last night. People are getting saved. Lives are being transformed. And it all happens because we are making investments in the kingdom of God to see people saved. And we're moving the gospel forward. Let's bow our heads this evening. Brother Esaias is going to pray for the offering. Thank you, musicians. Let's welcome evangelist Larry Borgard as he comes to preach. Hallelujah! I said hallelujah! hallelujah. We're getting there. When we were running 20 people, we had more shout than that. I said hallelujah! Okay, okay. If you have your Bibles, open them up to Matthew chapter 3. I got saved on February 13th, 1974, uh, first convert in this church, and uh, just about a month later, well, a week after I got saved, a guy that I worked with, he got saved. And so there was two of us, and two weeks later, another guy we worked with got saved. And so there was us three guys, and then there were a few other people that came in during that time. But 
The first baptism that we ever had in this church was on a Saturday after 1030 prayer meeting at a, a small Baptist church, Spanish-speaking Baptist church somewhere in the south side of Tucson. Uh, the baptismal tank was just a hole in the ground that they put cement in and there's no tile, no paint. They used a garden hose to fill it up. And it was in the middle of March and it was cold. <laughs> Pastor Warner was there and Sister Mona, Gary Childers and myself, and the man that opened the building for us, Wappen Five. That was the first baptism in this church 49 and a half years ago. And I didn't really think about getting baptized because I had been raised a Mormon and I was baptized in the Mormon church. I wrestled with Pastor Warner about getting baptized, Gary Childers, you know, he was still high after, off of all the LSD he'd been doing for years. So, you know, yeah, let's just, yeah. <laughs> so he did it willingly and I did it hesitantly and yet, something happened. I'm still here. In those days, though, the only reference point that I had was Pastor Warner and Sister Mona. That was it. No other reference point. And I want to talk about baptism a little bit with you tonight. If you're a young convert, or an older convert that's never been baptized in water, this is for you. And I hope that God stirs you and moves you to be baptized in water. If you're not a Christian tonight, I hope before you leave this building, you will be a Christian. That is my prayer. But I want to look at baptism with you for a moment. In Matthew chapter 3, we're reading about John's baptism. It was a baptism of water. The people would come out. For 400 years, God had been silent to the nation of Israel. And all of a sudden, this guy comes on the scene. He's preaching, repent, 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 uh, for the kingdom of God is at hand. The Messiah is coming. Repent. And he's baptizing them in water. And so as he began to do that, he was identified as the baptizer. When you came and got baptized by John the Baptist, it was a one-time washing and you had to bring fruit, for, meat for repentance. It was a confession of sin. It was also identifying as the people of God. God had covenant with the Jewish people. And so they were coming back to a realization that God was starting to move once again in the nation. And so Jesus and John both preached repentance. Now, water baptism was the outward sign of an inward change. That is all baptism is today. But it's one thing to be cleansed in a river, which is simply a symbolic thing because you've taken enough showers and baths, it hasn't changed you one bit. It's a whole other thing to be purified by the fiery presence of the living God. And Jesus came to baptize with the Holy Spirit in fire. First the water, then the fire. First the desert, then the Holy Spirit. My question I want to pose to you tonight is how much of God do you want in your life? How much of God do you want in your life? Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. Says, I indeed baptize you with water under repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Let's bow our heads this evening. Father, I ask you to move in every heart in this place. 
Let the spirit of revelation flow, the spirit of truth uh, that leads us into all truth, the truth that sets us free and keeps us free. Uh, Let it move freely in our midst tonight. Uh, Help each and every person here uh, to hunger and long for God uh, and be stirred by the power and the anointing of your spirit. I ask you to move upon those that are lost, uh, those that are watching uh, at home, uh, those that are lost, oh God, draw them nigh unto thee this night, I pray and ask in Jesus' name. God's people said, amen. Amen. So what is baptism for a moment? John the Baptist is in the wilderness, in the desert place, and he's calling people to repent. And repentance is not feeling sorry uh, about the things that you've done wrong. Repentance is not feeling guilty about your past. There's two things that never change in life. Number one, God never changes. And the second thing is that every single person that has ever been born into this world, uh, is, except for Jesus Christ, is born with a sin nature. We are sinners by nature. We're not sinners because we did something bad. We do something bad because we're sinners on the inside. And so repentance tonight is a basic reorientation of one's life. We turn from living one way and we turn to live another way. It's a turning of the way we think about life, the way we think about others, the way we think about God, the way that we think about how things ought to work in life and what love is and everything else. All of this through repentance we turn and we change from the direction that we had been walking in. And repentance is impossible unless we have a better way to go to. See, the reason people get delivered from drug addiction is because Jesus is so much better. So much better. So people don't just turn away from a way of life unless they have something better. And you turn to something that's more true, that is deeper. And so the world that we knew passed away and everything becomes new. The reason we came down to the altar in the early days of this church is every time we came to church, Pastor Warner would preach a sermon or an evangelist would preach a sermon, we're going, oh no, that's wrong in my life too. We are constantly realizing we were messed up. And we have to come to grips with our own sin nature and our own sinfulness. And so the baptism of John was a baptism that was matched with the repentance. Prepare your heart for the Lord's coming. And so water did not save them, but it identified them. And they repented of their sins. They prepared their hearts for the coming Messiah. And so the water was identifying them with God and with one another. You and I are sinners by nature. And when the Spirit of God begins to convict us, we respond because we're crying out, there's no hope for me. But there is because there's a Savior and His name is Jesus. And in order for you to be born again and ready to go to heaven, you have to come to a place where you realize, I'm lost. And the only hope is a Savior. And the only Savior is Jesus. And until you come to that point by the Spirit of God, you'll never be born again. We can be extremely religious in society today. Oh, go to church because people go to church. So we go to church, and then we come. Well, you know, I just thought I'd give God a chance. Why not get born again? Get a ticket to heaven. Because baptism is all about identifying. When Israel was in slavery in Egypt, and they were God's people by covenant, 
but they were slaves in this land. And so Moses, uh, even though he was born Jewish, uh, if you know the story, he ended up being raised in Pharaoh's household, uh, and he was right at the top of the nation for 40 years. He lived uh, everything that this world had to offer. He had it all. But down inside, he knew that he was Jewish. And one day, he saw a soldier mistreating the Jewish people, and he killed the guy. Out of that, he had to flee for his life. Spent the next 40 years on the backside of a desert, unlearning the world and learning God. How much of God do you want? See, 40 more years, he's there. And it was a bush that was burning, but not being consumed. And out of that came a voice. Now, if that happened to us today, we're looking around for the electronics. What kind of speaker can sustain itself in a fire, you know? But back then, they didn't have speakers. They didn't have microphones. God spoke to him out of a burning fiery bush that was not consumed. And so he answered that call. He's on his way to eat, eat back into Egypt to meet with Pharaoh. And halfway there, God stops him and says, either you circumcise your sons and bring them into the covenant or I'll kill you. His wife didn't like that. And she said, you're a bloody man. But in order for him to be the deliverer, he had to be delivered. And he had to bring his family with him. And so he comes before Pharaoh and said, God said, let my people go. And by doing that, he's identifying as a Jewish man now, not as one in Pharaoh's household. And so... He begins to speak to him, and there's one miracle after another miracle after another miracle, and it finally got down to that last day where Israel was told, Get, slay a lamb without blemish, take the bloods and put it on the doorposts, and when the angel of death passes over this nation, no one in that household will die. The next day, the firstborn of cattle the firstborn of, of, of the Egyptians were all dead. Then Moses told them, go door to door and take an offering. And so Israel left Egypt, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And they left Blessed, 400 years of back wages. But as they begin to travel, they reached a point where they come up against the Red Sea. There was a, a mountain on either side of them, but behind them was Pharaoh's army. In Exodus chapter 14, verse 8 and 9, And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, uh, and he pursued the children of Israel, and the ch children of Israel went out with boldness. So the Egyptians pursued them, all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh, his horsemen and his army, and overtook them camping by the sea beside Pharaoh before Baal, Baal Zephon. See, I want you to know tonight that God is in control of your salvation. It goes on in verse 10 through 12. And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted up uh, their eyes. And behold, the Egyptians marched after them. So they were uh, very afraid. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. Then they said to Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, uh, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Uh, why have you so dealt with us to bring us up out of Egypt? Is this not the word that we told you in Egypt? Egypt saying, let us alone uh, that we may serve the Egyptians, uh, for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians uh, than uh, that we should die in the wilderness. They said, you should have just left us alone. Why are you people coming and telling me I need Jesus? Why are you coming and bringing your religion to me? Just leave me alone. 
But the delivered deliverer speaks in verse 13 and 14. Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. These words, for the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. And then God told Moses, put your rod out, stretch it out over the water, and the waters parted. And when those waters parted, Israel went across uh, right through those waters. That is symbolic of water baptism. They were identifying with the God uh, that brought them into covenant. They were identifying with uh, one another. The enemy was behind them, uh, and they were moving forward in God. When you give your life to Jesus, the moment you give your life to Jesus, you will begin to move forward in God. And This is the Christian life. We identify with Christ and all those uh, that identify with him. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Paul put it this way, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. If you're young in the Lord, memorize this scripture. Because when Jesus died on the cross, he is our Savior. He is the high priest that was tempted in all points as you and I. Yet he never gave in to sin. He paid the price in full for our redemption. And the more the moment you give your life to Jesus, we now begin to walk in the power of that resurrection. This is a place of victory. This is a place of moving forward with God. And so uh, when we give our life to Jesus, all the old things, they are behind us. Quit hanging on to them. Look to Jesus. Move forward in Jesus. Let the faith of God equip you uh, and stir you uh, and move you uh, to believe God. uh, And don't be tormented uh, from the slavery of the past. Uh, Move on in God. Matthew 3, verse 13 and 14. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by, by him. And John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you. And are you coming to me? And Jesus answered to John. He says, just baptize me, John. Verse 15, he said, permit it to be so now, for thus it is filling, fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. So when Jesus came to John... He says, baptize me, John. He says, me baptize you? I'm not even even worthy to, to tie up your shoe. And you're asking me to baptize you. But Jesus was God identifying with humanity. And by receiving that baptism, he identified with his people and their sin. God does not separate himself from us. God loves us. He cares about us. And he's done everything to provide a way back to God. And he wants to be a part of our lives. So the fundamental purpose of Christ's baptism was to show show us the main work of Christ in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. We are baptized in water. We are submerged as a testimony. As a testimony that we've repented of our sin. We've called upon the name of Jesus. We have been born again. We're on our way to heaven. And I am going to publicly testify. That is water baptism. We identify with Christ. 
And we go into this watery grave and it's as if we're dead and we're buried and we come out of that water. We are alive with the resurrection life of God and it is what we, we are to live on a daily basis. This is what baptism is. We get baptized because we want to. See, I wrestled with baptism because I thought I was already baptized, but I was baptized in a false church. And I'm here to testify. And anybody that get baptized after you've been born again, you're here to testify publicly before God, before the world, before the devil and every demon of hell. Uh, I am here to testify. I'm a child of God. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That is baptism. <laughs> baptism did not save Israel at the Red Sea, but it made straight the way of the Lord. It paved way for them to go forward, not backwards, and to break free from deliverance of the past, and it gave them a very positive way forward. Mark chapter 1, verse 2 and 3, as it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. We read about Elijah on Mount Carmel. There's over 850 false prophets against this one prophet of God. It was a time of famine. And yet, before he called the fire to come down from heaven, uh, he called for 12 uh, barrels of water to be brought uh, to soak uh, the sacrifice. Why? Because those 12 uh, barrels of water represented the 12 tribes of Israel. Uh, it was identity. It was water baptism. And so baptism was never meant to be a religious rule that we have to follow in order to make heaven. Philippians 3.10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. This is the life that we're to live. How much of God do you want? Let's look at the baptism of Jesus for a moment. Our text says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. John's baptism cleansed with water. Jesus' baptism will purge with fire. John's baptism required repentance. Jesus' baptism test the results or the reality of that repentance. John's baptism was immersion. When Philip met the Ethiopian eunuch and began to share with him what Isaiah was talking about and the Messiah, they were near a body of waters and the guy believed what he was told and he says, what's preventing me from being baptized? He said, nothing. They went down and he got baptized. In water. John the Baptist, his own description of himself, I am a voice. Nothing more. I am a voice. And he was forever pointing people to the Lamb of God. I indeed baptize you with water, but the one that's coming after me will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. There's a difference between these two elements. John's is an outward thing. Every sinner can be baptized into whatever they want to be baptized into. Anybody can dunk you in water for whatever reason. It's all outward. But the baptism that Jesus gives us, it's on the inside. And it has cleansing and purifying characteristics about it and it brings forth life the fire will burn away the dross and the filth uh, and all kinds of things because fire burns three times in this portion of scripture fire is spoken of 
Two of them speak of judgment, one of them of promise. And verse 10 says, Even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees, therefore every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. That's judgment. Verse 12, his winnowing fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. That's speaking of judgment. But in our text, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. That is life-giving power. That is something that brings forth life. Uh, that's why Jesus told the, the disciples in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witness to me, to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Uh, on the day of Pentecost, uh, we find the, that the fire began to fall. They knew that God was going to move. They just didn't know how. They didn't know when, uh, but they knew he was going to move uh, and they were there praying and laying hold of God uh, when the Spirit of God came down. Uh, and the Bible tells us in verse uh, in Acts chapter 2, 3, and 4, then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, uh, and one sat upon each of them. Uh, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Uh, when God uh, fills us with the Holy Ghost, uh, fire comes with it. In Acts chapter 2, uh, verses 37 and through 39, when, Paul, uh, when Peter's finishing his sermon, uh, the people cry out and they said, Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ uh, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift uh, of the Holy Spirit for the promises to you and to your children. Uh, and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. And 3,000 people got saved that day. These were fishermen. They hadn't been to Bible college, but they'd been with Jesus. And they were where God told them to be when God poured out His Spirit. Can you imagine if we begin to worship God and there was a flame of fire sitting on all of our heads? What would that do to you? I guarantee you it would put a smile on your face. Especially when the hair's not being consumed. That's real supernatural. So this is the same fire that fell at Mount Carmel, consuming the sacrifice. And that day the people cried out, the Lord, he is God, the Lord, he is God. You see, Jesus did not leave us as orphans. In Isaiah 33, 14, who among us says the prophet shall dwell with everlasting burnings. If you read back in the Old Testament, uh, when God made covenant uh, uh, with Abraham, uh, we find that the divine presence of God was represented by a smoking furnace, and it was a lamp of fire that passed between the divided pieces uh, of the sacrifice. When this great revelation of the divine name was given to Moses out of that fiery bush, uh, <coughs> where God said, I am that I am, uh, that bush was not being consumed. When God puts the fire in you, it will not destroy you. It will bring forth power, the power of the living God moving through you. It will cleanse you. It will purify you. It will give you everything to live for, and you don't have to look back. It was a pillar of fire by night, pillar of smoke by day, the Holy Ghost in fire. And when Elijah called the fire down from heaven, that's the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That fire came down and consumed the sacrifice. You open your heart before God. How much of God do you want tonight? You be that sacrifice before God. You open your heart and say, God, I want everything you have for me. I want you to use my life. If there's anything I can do, and you open your heart before God, He's a big God, and He can fill you with the Holy Ghost and fire. 
In Luke chapter 12, verses 49 through 52 in the Passion Translation, I have come to set the earth on fire, and how I wish it were already ablaze with the fiery passion for God. But first I must be immersed into the baptism of God's judgment, and I am consumed with passion as I await its fulfillment. God wants you and I to be full of the fire and passion of God. I'm not going to read all of it, but John 14, verses 10 through 18, a lengthy portion of Scripture, but verse 12, Jesus said, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. Jesus is getting ready to leave. And he's telling them, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. I'm going to send you another helper. In verse 18, he says, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. You see, when we get honest before God, say, God, I just want you to use my life. Here I am. Let the fire of God purge, cleanse, and move through you. And he will build his church through you. And you do not have to live a boring day in your life. You see, baptism of the Holy Ghost in fire, Peter on the day of Pentecost, he had been backslidden just a few weeks earlier. And yet when he got filled with the Holy Ghost, he says, drunk? We're not drunk. This is what the prophet Joel prophesied. He began to preach one of the most powerful sermons ever. And God moved through this man in power because that's what Jesus said I'm going to do. Peter and John at the gate called beautiful. They were filled and they were directed by the Spirit of God. Philip, when he went down to Samaria, he was cleansed and filled. And there were miracles and demons were crying out because they couldn't stand the power and the presence of God that was releasing people from their grip. And today you and I can be filled with the Holy Ghost and fire of God. It's the Spirit of God that convicts of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. I got saved February 13th. I began to witness to a friend of mine, Kim Pensinger. I witnessed to him on a regular basis. His birthday was May 19th, and I'll never forget. He picked me up. We went to a bar. I know I'm saved, but what am I doing in a bar? But I've been witnessing to this guy, and it's his birthday. He got a beer. I got a Coke. We played air hockey. How many know what that is? That was a new game in those days. It had just come out. And we're playing this, and halfway through the game, he took his beer and just poured it out on the floor and said, let's get out of here. So we walked out, sitting in the vehicle, and he, we get to talking, and I'm telling him, say, Kim, you need Jesus. You really need Jesus. He'll, he'll change everything. He was, it was his 21st birthday, and he was not feeling well. He was not a happy camper. And we talked, and then he brought up a, a, a fellow musician that we, we both knew. He knew this guy from when they were young, but I knew him just uh, recently in the last few years before I got saved. And he, he brought him up, and he says, you know, He goes to this other church and he talks in tongues. I says, really? For two months, Pastor Warner was preaching on the baptism of the Holy Ghost almost every service. He at least mentioned it. Gary Childers, that got saved a week after me, he got filled with the Holy Ghost pretty fast. I resisted. Not because... Of craziness, it was just because I'd been raised a Mormon. I'd been taught one thing for 20 years of my life. And so this was all new to me and I was trying to grasp it. But we'd be working together. He'd come up and goes, you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I mean, he'd just radically get on my case. And so that might have contributed to me shoving him aside for a minute. But this night with Kim, he's so troubled. And when he told me, 
that our mutual friend was saved and speaking in tongues, the Spirit of God said, this is for you. Out of a sinner, God spoke to this kid. Kim Pensinger went home. Over the next hour, half hour or so, he's walking, pacing back and forth in his bedroom, finally fell down on his bed and cried out to God, got saved, born again on his 21st birthday. I went back to my house and began to cry out to God, I want this, I want this. The presence of God was overwhelming. It was, it was beyond anything I'd ever experienced. I didn't talk in tongues because I didn't know I could. But the next night, Wednesday night, I walked into church and I told Pastor Warner, I want you to pray for me get filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm going to get it. He hardly ever got a chance to lay hands on me and it was just coming out full blown. <laughs> so there was about two or three of us that were filled with the Holy Ghost now. That was the beginning of this church. That fire that was in Pastor Warner, I caught it. Others caught it. And as people came in, they automatically caught it. Uh, and they hungered for God. And we were going to take the world for Jesus because he was coming at any moment. He still is. Not on our timeline, but he still is. But the Holy Ghost and fire was so powerful. I mean, we'd talk and say, man, I was thinking, you know, I'm just... I thought, well, maybe I ought to just one more time get high. And we thought we'd be right in the middle going, and the rapture would hit, and we'd be left behind. So we didn't dare. We wouldn't dare. That was the atmosphere of this church. You see, the Spirit of God cleanses us on the inside. And we had all of God to live for, and the whole world was the map that we were to walk on. Every step that we took, God was going to give us as an inheritance. We had something to live for. This generation today, they desperately need something to live for. And tonight, if you're here, you've never been baptized in water and you've given your life to Jesus, it's a good time. To, to make up your mind, talk to Pastor Garrett, talk to others on staff, say, I need to be baptized in water. That's a good step of obedience. Why? Because you're publicly standing up and you're testifying. I am a child of God and I identify with Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection. And I identify with all of God's people that have done the same thing. And get filled with the Holy Ghost and fire of God. And you can get as much of God as you want. And there's a whole lot out there. I could tell you story after story after story of things that God did back in those days that would blow your mind. And I believe that the day is coming. We're going to see some of those things all over again. Beyond words when God begins to pour out his spirit. I pray all the time, God... Give us the fires of revival so we can live for you. We're looking forward to you. We're walking in faith uh, and we're moving forward with you. We're not hung up on the past. Uh, let the devil worry about those things. Uh, I'm going on in God because I have been cleansed. Uh, I have been washed in the blood of Jesus. Uh, I belong to God. Uh, I'm a child of God uh, and he's put his spirit and his presence in me and he will move through me. I don't have time to be hung up on the past. All things have become new. I'm living for Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads in the presence of God. Two baptisms. One of water, which is the outward, <clears throat> and the inward is the spirit of the living God comes in us tonight you're here you're not right with God if you were to die right now you're not sure that you would go to heaven this is a good time to make sure you are a sinner 
by nature. And because of that, the sentence of death is upon your life. But if you will call upon the name of Jesus and repent of your sins, Jesus will forgive you all your sins and give you a brand new start in life. I didn't come to get religion. I came to get Jesus. It's relationship, not religion. Tonight you're not right with God. If you died right now, you wouldn't make heaven. Down inside you know that. You're troubled. Something's not right. You're not say, well, I thought I was saved, but I'm not sure. If you're not sure, surrender to Christ tonight. He died for you. He is the only Savior. That was the greatest news I heard the night that I heard the gospel. I realized before God what a mess I was, uh, and yet there was a Savior that loved me so much. He died uh, and gave his life for me and then rose from the dead uh, to give me a new life, uh, to forgive me of all my sins. He can do the same for you tonight. And if that's you, you're not right with God, you want to get right with God. I wonder if you'd lift your hand up all over this building and say, preacher, I need to get right with God tonight. I, I need Jesus tonight. Lift your hand up. Anyone at all? All over this building. You're here. You're not right with God. You're not a Christian. You're not ready to meet Jesus. You're not ready to make heaven. And you want to make sure that you've got that assurance. You'd like to give your life to Jesus. Lift your hand up. Anyone at all? Anyone at all? Maybe you're a backslider. The backsliding is not just because I went out and did something foolish. Backsliding starts in the heart long before everybody sees it on the outward because we're pretty good at what we do. But you're not right. Things are not right. God's dealing with you. Surrender to Him. It's the greatest life that you could ever experience here on earth. The greatest peace that you could ever have comes from God and Him alone. You will find no real peace outside of Christ. Backslider unsaved, you want to get right with God, would you slip your hand up? Anyone at all? Hallelujah. God sees this hand. Who else? Backslider? Unsaved. See, backslider has no peace. They can still come to church, clap their hands, and go through the motions, but they have no peace. Jesus died to give you peace that no man can give you. Anyone else want to get right with God? Lift your hand up. Hallelujah. If you're at home, you're watching this. This is a good time to give your life to Jesus. You say, well, I don't know how to do that. Very simply say, God, I'm a sinner. Jesus, come into my heart, change me. I want to live for you, make yourself real to me. And if you mean that, God will touch you. You make it to church the next service we have. Talk to somebody. We will help you any way we can. If you lifted your hand and you need Jesus, I want you to look at me for a moment. You mean that tonight? You want to give your life to Jesus? I want you to come to the front if you can. Someone's going to pray with you tonight. If there's anyone else that you raised your hand, or maybe you didn't, but down inside, you know, I'm not right with God. I want to make sure that I'm right with God. Come, find a place to pray. Let God make himself real to you and forgive all your sins. Hallelujah. I want to talk for a moment to every person here that has never been baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire of God. There's so much religion out there that people say, well, you know, you got your prayer language and I don't have 
I, don't, I didn't get the prayer language. No. When they got filled with the Holy Ghost, all of them spoke in tongues. The early church, they were all tongue talkers. But more than that, it was the power of witness that began to flow through their life. The power of the living God. Tonight you're here, you've never been baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. Maybe you've been prayed for before, maybe you haven't. You're a young Christian, you're an older Christian. This is a good time to be filled with the Holy Ghost and fire of God. And we can pray for you and the presence of God is here. He will fill you because God is on the move. Uh, you know, people say, oh, you know, the church, uh, they've let down the world. The church Jesus is building has never let down the world. It is a church on fire. It is moving forward, uh, and it is going to bring things to an end, uh, and you can be a part of that great move of God, and you can be full of the Holy Ghost uh, and fire of God. God will move through you. How much of God do you want? You're here tonight. You want to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. I want you to lift your hand up quickly all over this building. Amen. Hands are going up. Who else had joined these? Say, I need to get filled with the Holy Ghost. I want to be prayed for. I want to get filled with the Holy Ghost. Young person, mom, dad, you're here. You've given your life to Jesus, but you've never been baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire of God. Let God make himself real to you tonight. Let God uh, reveal himself and move powerfully upon you and through you uh, and cleanse you uh, with life-giving power. Who else wants to be filled with the Holy Ghost? Lift your hands quickly. Anyone else? There's people here that Jesus wants to move through your life. And all you have to do is open your heart and say, God, here am I. Fill me. Fill me. You want to get filled with the Holy Ghost, I want you to get out of your seat. Come stand in the front quickly. Quickly. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Just come and line up back here, back towards the back a little bit. Just stand up. I want these young men that I was talking to the other night to come forward also. They're going to help me pray for you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let's line up shoulder to shoulder. Let's just... Help us, some of you, you guys. Just line up shoulder to shoulder all the way across. We got to get to you. Hallelujah. This is not a religious thing. This is a God thing. Hallelujah. Philip went down to the city of Samaria. God moved. People were healed. People were delivered. Citywide revival but it wasn't until Peter and John came down and they began to pray for people to get filled with the Holy Ghost. And when they did, all heaven broke loose. Back in the early days of this church, we would pray for somebody to get saved. And when we finished praying with them, we'd look at them and say, wow, you feel that? And they go, yeah, I feel that. God's just saved you, and they're all happy. You want to get filled with the Holy Ghost too? Yeah, and we just lay hands on They get filled with the Holy Ghost right on the spot. That's how it was, every service. Are you ready to get filled with the Holy Ghost tonight? Okay? And we're going to pray for you. All it is is simple faith. Did you understand everything about God when you gave your life to Jesus? Did you understand all, everything about Him? No, you just simply prayed a simple prayer that they told you to pray. Is that correct? That's simple faith. Same faith. And you can be filled with the Holy Ghost. In a moment, we're going to lay hands on you. All these men up front, they're going to go along and lay hands on you. I'll come down and lay hands on some of you, and we'll all together pray for you. But it takes faith. In a moment, we'll, we're going to lay hands on you and say, receive the Holy Ghost. And when we simply say receive the Holy Ghost, we're going to lay our hands on you. And you're going to sense the presence of God. Anybody know what cotton mouth is? 
dope smokers. It's almost like your tongue. You can feel your tongue moving around inside. God's given you the language. All you have to do is put your voice to it. Simple faith. Receive the Holy Ghost and lay hands on you. And you begin to speak out whatever God gives you. You will not think it up in your head. It doesn't come that way. Because it's the Holy Spirit within. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water, the Bible says. You want this tonight? You want this? This is the game changer in your life. This gives you the power that God has for every single believer in Jesus Christ. And talking in tongues just stirs that up inside us. You want this? Hallelujah. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for saving me. Thank you for changing my life. You are the Lord of my life. And I pray right now that you break the powers of darkness over my life. I kick the devil out. I close the doors to the devil. Jesus is Lord of my life. And I come before you right now and I ask you to baptize me in the Holy Ghost and fire in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I want you to begin to tell them you love them. Saints of God, let's begin to worship God in this place. In the name of Jesus, receive the Holy Ghost. That's it. Let it go. In the name of Jesus, receive the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, receive the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah! See the Holy Ghost! Speak out in the name of Jesus! In the name of Jesus! In the name of Jesus! Let's worship God in this place! Let's lift our voices before God! Let's lift up our voices! Let's worship the living God! Hallelujah! 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 Oh God, we love you, Lord. Let the fire of God fall in this place. Let the fire of God consume the sacrifice. Let the great I am begin to move through our lives beyond anything we've ever imagined. God be God in our midst. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Glory to Jesus! Glory to Jesus! Hallelujah! sensitive to God right now. Hallelujah. speak to my people. I have loosed my spirit. My spirit is in you to do my work and my power shall go forth. Step forth. Open your hearts to me. I, the Lord God, speak unto you. I want to speak through you to this lost generation to impact and to do my work and to do my will. Go forth. 
forth uh, in the power of the Spirit. It's not by might, nor is it by power. It's by my Spirit uh, in you as you allow me to speak through you uh, and to work through you to reach others. Thus saith God Almighty. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Feels good in this place tonight. Amen. The only peace that anybody will ever have is when they have peace from God. Otherwise, they have no peace. We have the good news because we have the Prince of Peace within. We have the answer for this generation. Open your voice. Let God move through you. Get in prayer meeting before service. Get full of the Holy Ghost before service. So when you walk into service, you're full of the Holy Ghost and fire of God. And let God be God in your life. How much of God do you want? Hallelujah. God bless you. Rain came when bloom. My house was built on you. Oh, oh, I say. Blessing to someone around you. How I many appreciate evangelist Larry Beauregard tonight? His life, his ministry, very powerful. Invite someone over, have a wonderful fellowship. Fourth of July, happy Fourth of July. Celebrate the liberty that Jesus has given you. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Be mindful of all the announcements. I'm going to ask Brother Edgar Terrence of this voice, ask the Lord's blessing as we are being dismissed.
kids, God, we pray. God, give us safety and guidance as we go. Bring us back safely. In your name we pray.